Hey everybody! I had hoped to make one single video about getting all of my modding tools in place, but it turned out to be so long that I decided to split it into three different videos. Uh, the last one was all about getting Mod Organizer 2 and SKSC64 set up. And this time I'm going to cover adding all the different tools that I'm going to need alongside MO2. So I've got it up and running with the bare essentials um, as shown in the last video. But before I start adding mods, there are a few more things that I need to do. Now at this point, I'm actually going to go ahead and create uh, another profile, uh, one where I'm not going to activate any of the mods in case I want to do some with and without comparisons. It's easy to do it now before I add anything. I click on the Profile drop-down and select Manage to bring up the Profiles window. Now here for the default profile, I'm going to go ahead and click the box to set Profile Specific Save Games. This keeps things clean because I won't have all my characters saved across all the profiles. They're only going to show up in the profile that I'm using to play them. And then I select Create to make a new profile. I give it a name. And then just for this one profile, I'm going to select use the default any settings. Normally I would not do that since I want to use the specific any settings that I'm going to create. But this profile is my no mods profile. And so I want it to be as close to vanilla as possible. So I will let it go ahead and use the default uh, game any settings. Then I click OK and I close that window. Now in the drop down box, I can select my new profile. And you can see there are no active mods selected here because I chose to create a new profile instead of copying the one that I already had where those mods were active. Okay, so onward and upward. There are a few more tools that I need to install before all the fun really begins. And next up I'm going to do Rye Bash. And I installed this one using another great tutorial from Gamer Poets. The link is provided below. I don't really know much about Rybash except that it's the go-to tool for creating something we call a bashed patch, which is generally done to merge leveled lists of mods together so that all the items that you want that you've added into your game, they will all show up in loot tables, merchant lists, and so forth instead of just the ones that are in the very last mod in your load order. I followed Michael's link over to the Rybash page on Nexus. And then in the Files tab, I hit Manual Download for the installer version as he recommends. Then I go ahead and I select the Button of Shame since I'm not a premium member. I choose to open it with 7-Zip. And the 7-Zip window opens once the download is complete. Right here in the 7-Zip window, I can just double click the installer file and the setup wizard opens. Here I again follow Michael's guide at Gamer Poets. I leave these default boxes ticked and the SSE game path as listed. I click Next, Next again, leave the box for extra locations unticked, and then I hit Next and leave the defaults on the last page and select Install. When it's done, I hit Next, untick the boxes since I don't want anything to launch right now and then I go ahead and close. And then I close out all these extra windows I have open since I'm done with them, and I head back over to MO2. Now in MO2, I need to add Rybash to the executables list. So I click on the executable icon, the two little gears, and then I select the plus sign to add a new executable. Now be sure here that you click the plus sign or you might accidentally overwrite whichever executable is currently selected, which is what I did at first by accident. I had written over SKSE, had to go back and add it back in, then hit the plus sign uh, to add Rybash as a new executable. Now yeah, there's a couple options you can see here. Uh, I just pick Add from File, and then I navigate to where Rybash is located. Now, I don't really know why, but it wanted to be installed inside the SSE game folder, which I don't really like, but it seems that that's what you're supposed to do. So um, that's where I let it install. Anyway, the name of the folder is actually Mopy, M-O-P-Y. That's the name of the Rybash folder. 
So I open that, I select the ribash.exe, and then click Open, and then click OK. And now I can see that Ribash has been added into the drop-down list of executables. We go ahead and test it out by selecting it, and then hit Run. It looks like it opens fine, so I can just hit the X in the upper right corner to close it out. And you can see here that even though I didn't actually do anything, and I don't really have any mods, it went ahead and created a bashed patch file by default. I could just leave this here, uh, but since I like keeping things tidy, I decided to go ahead and just delete it for now. It's going to have to be remade once I actually add a bunch of mods anyway. So it's located in the overwrite folder. So in the left hand pane of MO2, I double click where it says overwrite. And then I can see the bashpatch.esp there. So I right click on it and select delete. And that just gets rid of it. Close the overwrite folder. And then I get ready for the next step. Now the next thing I'm going to install is SSE Edit. Now some people may ask, do I really have to bother with complicated things like SSE Edit or the Creation Kit? And my answer to that is no, but yes. Now, I suppose you can use mods without ever having to open either one of those tools. But the way I see it is you may as well tie both hands behind your back because you're going to create a significant handicap for yourself if you avoid these tools altogether. So I would suggest go ahead, install them, and learn some of the very, very basics of trying to use them. Now I plan to install both, and I'm going to go ahead and start with SSE Edit. And luckily my modding hero Michael over at Gamer Poets has tutorials for both of these. So go watch his videos. First up, we're going to do SSE Edit. So I follow Michael's link to the Nexus page. I go to the Files tab, and then I select Manual Download, followed by the Yes, I'm a Horrible Person non-member download button, and then I choose to Open with 7-Zip. When the download completes, the 7-Zip window automatically opens. I just slide it over to the side, and then I open another window next to it where I want to install SSE Edit. I chose my modding folder, and I created a new folder there, which I called SSE Edit. I open that new folder, then I use the shift click trick to select everything in the 7-zip window, and I drag and drop it right over into my empty SSE Edit folder, which will extract all of those files to that location. When that's done, I close the 7-zip window, and I go back to MO2 because now I need to add SSE Edit as a new executable. So I click on the executables, which is the two little gears. I select the plus sign and add from file. And then I browse to where I've just installed SSE Edit. You'll see there's two executables here and I actually need both of them. And you'll need both of them. <laughs> So first up, we'll just do straight SSE edit. So I select that, I hit open, and then I hit apply. Then I go back to the plus sign, I select add from file again. Then I browse to the second one, which is called SSE edit quick auto clean. I select that, click open, click apply, and then click OK. Then I check in the drop down list to make sure that both were added. And I also want to make sure that each one of them runs properly from that menu. So first I'm going to give regular SSE Edit a quick test. I select it here and then I hit Run. Now you'll see some pages pop up. First there's a What's New page. So I just click OK to go past that. Then I get the Please Support Me With Money page. And this page has a timer on it. So I can't do anything here until I wait for, I don't even know how many seconds, a little bit, uh, until the close option actually becomes available. And then I close that window. I just leave all the modules selected as they are by default, and I hit OK to load them all up. It takes a little while to do that, and I entertain myself by reading the tips that pop up until it's finished loading. And now I can see the modules listed in the left pane, and then the details for whatever I've selected are over in the right pane. 
it all looks like it's working. It opened fine and everything seems good. So I just close SSE Edit by clicking the X in the upper right corner. Now I want to double check the Quick Auto Clean. So I select SSE Edit Quick Auto Clean and I hit Run. And it's the same deal. I click through those opening pages. But this time I don't select anything to clean because I actually don't want to risk breaking anything by cleaning a mod that shouldn't be cleaned. Some modules shouldn't be cleaned and I'm not too sure about these two. So we're just going to close this without doing anything. Um, that's fine. All I really wanted to know was that these executables would launch properly from MO2 and clearly they did. So we're ready to move on to the next step. Up next on my list was the creation kit. Again, you may wonder if you need it. The main reason I would say yes right now is because the creation kit is essential if you want to convert any um, legendary or the original Skyrim mods over to the SSE format. So I would suggest you pull up the Gamer Poets tutorial on installation of the creation kit. There's a link below and follow Michael's instructions, which is what I did. So I head over to Bethesda.net via the link that he gives in his tutorial. And then I actually proceed to be very confused for a while because I didn't see anything anywhere on this page about downloading the creation kit. Now this actually turned out to be a series of really annoying steps and I had some unexpected problems. So I'll just show you all that here. First on this page, you've got to scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the Bethesda.net page. And then where it says Bethesda Launcher, that's where you want to click download. If it takes you to another screen like it did for me, then you have to click again, the download for free button and then save file will come up in the pop-up window. Click on that. When that was done, I then clicked the blue download arrow in Firefox and selected the folder icon to navigate to my downloads folder. From there, just like I've installed all these other things, I double clicked on the Bethesda launcher setup. I left the default install location since I don't intend to really use this anyway. Uh, I unticked create shortcut because again, I don't think I'm going to really use this. And I went ahead and I hit install. After it finished doing its thing, this sign in window popped up. Now, apparently I didn't have an account. It's not your Steam account. So I guess it's a completely separate Bethesda account. And I had some problems trying to set it up using this little pop up window. So after struggling for a while, I finally just went right back over to the Bethesda.net page and I clicked on the login slash sign up button that's in the upper right hand corner on that page. And that took me through the process of creating an account. I had to enter an email, a password, pick a security question, but I was able to do it successfully from that page, not that little window. All right, with that done, and that took way longer than it should have, I actually cut a bunch of it out <laughs> for your sanity. Uh, then I went back to this little Bethesda launcher window to try signing in. And this time using the new account information I just created, it worked. So I was able to get signed in. And from there, it was easy enough to finish the task. So I, I clicked on the games tab at the top. I found the creation kit on the list. Click on it with the little hand and then hit install on the creation kit page. Again, I, I left all the default settings here, which was to install it right in the SSE game folder, but I did not create any shortcuts, which is fine because I'm only intending to really launch this via MO2, and then went ahead and clicked on install. Now, once it was done, I hit play. I'm not sure if I had to do that or if I was even really supposed to do that, but um, I guess curiosity got the better of me. So I went ahead and clicked play here and you can see that some things sort of happen in the background. So I'm going to assume that maybe that's part of finishing the setup. But when that was done and the creation kit opened, um, then I just went ahead and closed it back out because I'm going to run it through MO2 
And so that was the next step was to set up the creation kit as an executable from within MO2. This is the same drill as with all the other tools. You click on the gears, click the plus sign and select add from file, and then navigate to the creationkit.exe file in the SSE game folder. Select it, hit open, click apply and OK. And then finally, I want to go ahead and test it out. So in the executables drop down menu, I select creation kit and hit run. Once I make sure it opens successfully, I just hit X in the upper right corner to close it back up. And then uh, just go ahead and clean up my desktop to close out a lot of these windows and put all that behind me because it was a pain. <laughs> There is one important thing that I didn't do at this point with the creation kit. By default, it allows you or, or it does not allow you to load more than one master at a time. And so you need to go into the creation kit any file and actually add a line of text. And I would recommend that you head over to Gamer Poets and watch his creation kit installation tutorial and you can see how that's done. And there's a link for that provided below. If you don't do that, then you may find yourself getting errors if you try to load things up into the creation kit. So I would recommend you go ahead and do that right now um, before it slips your mind and later you're wondering why you can't get your mods to load up in creation kit properly. All right, the last tool on my list was loot, which is a pretty decent tool for helping to sort your mod load order. I didn't have a tutorial to follow for this one, but I've installed Loot before and I remembered it seemed fairly straightforward. So I go over to the Nexus and find the Loot page. Then in the Files tab, I hit Manual Download. And then again, I choose the You Suck Slow Download button. Then Save File at the pop-up window. I wait until Firefox's little blue download arrow shows that it's complete. I click it, select the folder picture, just like we keep doing, I double clicked on the downloaded loot file and the installation begins. Now it wants to put it by default in my programs 86 folder, but I just don't want to put anything in there unless I absolutely have to. Windows is very controlling about stuff that you put in those program folders, either programs or programs 86. So that's why I keep saying just avoid putting thing in there if you poss possibly can. Now I'm going to put this in my modding folder. So I select that, then I click OK, click Next. I don't make a shortcut for this because I don't expect to use it outside of MO2. So I just click Next. The install completes, and then I choose to wait before restarting my computer just because I want to double check real quick that I've got everything closed. I click Finish. I check my desktop. Everything looks fine, so I'm going to go ahead and restart the system now. Now when my system comes back up, I open MO2 because I need to add loot to the executables. Now look, lo and behold, MO2 is so smart. It already saw that I had loot installed and it added it from the correct location and everything. So I go ahead and give it a quick test by selecting loot in the drop down menu. I hit run and I make sure it launches properly. It does, so go ahead and close it out. But now I see that for some reason I've got two creation kits listed and so I decided to go ahead and clean that up. I guess MO2 got a little too smart for itself. It recognized that I had added the creation kit into the game folder, but I guess it didn't recognize I had, I had already added it as an executable, so it made a second one. But we can fix that. So I open the executables window by clicking on the gears. I look through both listings. They point to exactly the same executable file. So I, I just need to get rid of one of them. So I choose the creation kit listing that looks less complete. It just has one of the lines not filled out. It's probably the one I added because I did it lazy mode. And then I just hit the minus button to delete it. Then I hit apply and OK. And then I just quick check that the listing I do have in the executables drop down menu still launches properly. So I select it, I hit run, it executes fine, and my list looks nice and clean and complete. So that's it. Whew. So 
That's a lot of work to get MO2 uh, all set up alongside all of its different executable tools. But now it's finally done and I'm ready to mod. And I can't wait, actually. There's so many great mods now out for SSE. And I hear it's really a more stable platform. So I'm really excited to get going and get back into my Skyrim role playing. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.